For more videos like this for discrete one, you can take a look at Sarai's studies. Link is in the description box below. We're told to prove that if n is odd, then n squared is odd. Meaning that if we take any odd number n, like 1, then 1 squared, which is 1, is supposed to be odd, and it is. Or if we take 3, which we know is odd, then 3 squared, which is 9, is supposed to be odd, and it is. Or if we take 5, which we know is odd, then 5 squared, which is 25, is supposed to be odd, and it is. So we see that this is true for the odd numbers 1, 3, and 5, but we have to prove that this is true for every single odd number n but there's infinite amount of odd numbers and you don't have the time to plug in infinite amount of odd numbers that's impossible so because of that we have to use logic to prove that this is true for every single odd number so the first thing you do in any proof is identify the domain if it's not given to you so here it's not given to us but you have to use the context of the problem you see that something is odd so odd is a property of numbers but it's specifically a property of integers because the only numbers that can be even or odd are integers so the domain that you're working in is a set of all integers which we represent with this symbol a z and an extra line the second thing you do no matter what proof you're doing is write down your definitions what does it mean for an integer to be odd well let's start with what it actually means for an integer to be even so write down the first three even integers that you can think of i think of two four and six how do you know that they're even because when you divide these by two you get a full number here you get two divided by two is one four divided by two is two six divided by two is three you don't get any decimals you get integers so way to generalize this is you can say for any odd number i'm going to call that number s if i divide it by two it's going to give me some other number by the way again when i say number i mean integer because that's the domain we're working in so keep that in mind for the rest of the video it's going to give me some other integer and instead of writing down what the integer is we can just represent that other integer with another variable let's say k but we want to explicitly define what an even number is so we want to get s by itself so we're just going to take this to the other side so we have s and we're dividing it by two and that's going to give us k to get s by itself we multiply by 2 on both sides these cancel out but whatever we do to one side we have to do to the other so we multiply by 2 on this side and we get that s is equal to 2 times k so we have the definition of an even integer is equal to another integer k multiplied by 2 but this is the definition of an even integer we want the definition of an odd integer so i want you to think back to the numbers 2 4 6 if you take 2 and you add a 1 what do you get 3 okay if you take 4 you add a 1 what do you get 5 if you take 6 and add a 1 what do you get 7. Do you notice a pattern? If you have an even number and you simply add a 1, it gives you an odd number. So how do we define even numbers? With 2 times k. So if we take an even number and you add a plus 1, you get an odd number. So now we have the definition of an odd integer, which is just an even integer plus 1. But we can't just leave this on our paper as our definition. Because if some random person just looked at our paper, they're going to be like, what's s? what's k? Are they integers? Are they decimals? You have to use words to explicitly define what an odd integer is. So in words, this translates to an integer s is odd if and only if, again with definitions, we write if and only if instead of saying if so that we can go both directions. There exists another integer k, so some other integer k, such that it satisfies the condition where if you take k and multiply it by 2 and then add a 1 to it, it's going to give you that odd odd integer s. So now that we have all of the definitions we need, we're ready to start a proof. Because I see an implication, the first thing you always want to try is a direct proof. So at the start of my paper, I'm going to say proof by and the method I'm going to try and that's direct proof. So a direct proof says that if this is p and this is q, then we assume p is true and then we use axioms, theorems we have already proven, definitions, properties, known equivalences to get to the other side to get to q to show that it's true. So we start by assuming p, but what is p? n is odd. So what does it mean for n to be odd? Well, luckily for us, we have a definition of what it means for an integer to be odd. If an integer is odd, so in this case that integer is n, it is only odd if and only if there exists another integer k such that if you take that integer k, multiply it by 2, and add a 1, it's going to give you n, your odd integer. In other words, because we are assuming that this is true, that n is odd, then there is some integer k that if you multiply by 2 and add a 1 to that, it's going to give you n. So assuming this is true, this implies that n is going to be equal to, again, some integer k, multiplied by 2, out of 1, and it's going to give you n. So here we use the definition of an odd integer. Now, as a side note, I did do this in the last video. You can check it out here at Sarai Studies. If we zoom in, it's the exact same proof. It's just instead of odd, it was even. But my point is, if you notice the definition, I simplified it by using symbols we learned in class. So going back to this, you can simplify your definition if you want. So if and only if is just a fancy way of saying the double implication 
operator there exists you can replace with the there exists quantifier and then you can say there exists a k where so the comma means where k is an element of is part of lives inside of the set of all integers and then such that you can replace with subject to so s dot t dot this condition and you can leave that as is but that's just a note i want you to get used to seeing definitions in different forms so back to the proof we assume that p was true which implied that n is equal to this but we want to go from assuming p is true to showing q to saying something about n squared and that something we want to say is that n squared is odd but first of all let's focus on getting n squared we just have n right now so how can we say something about n squared well we can just literally square n but whatever we do to one side we have to do to the other so we can say that this implies n squared is equal to 2k plus 1 but we also have to square this side so these are still equivalent because we did the same thing on both sides so i'm just going to call this algebraic manipulation now we're saying something about n squared but we want to say that n squared is odd what does it mean for an integer to be odd well an integer that is odd is going to be equal to something of this form where you have two times another integer plus one but right now this integer that we want to say is odd is equal to something squared so we have to get it to look like this so let's start by working this out so when you have terms that are squared you want to square this term and square this term so 2k squared 1 squared and then in the middle you want to add 2 times the product of these two so 2k times 1 so the product which is just 2k and you want to add everything together and if you simplify this well 1 squared is just 1 2 times 2 is 4 4, 2 squared is 4, and then k squared is k squared. So this implies that n squared is equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. But again, we want to get n squared to look like this, where there's a 2 times another integer plus 1. So we need a 2 to be outside. Luckily for us, here we have 4. So we can take out a 2, and then here we'll have 2k squared plus, and then here we'll have 2k and then leave out a plus one so we factored out a two from these and now we have that n squared is equal to two times something plus one so we have it that n squared is equal to two times something plus one so it's in the form of an odd number but that something should be an integer is this an integer well it is because in the beginning here we should have specified so let me move this over where k is an integer which we already knew because we defined that we use the definition of an odd number and the definition of an odd number says that k is an integer but it doesn't hurt to write it so because we defined that k is already an integer if you multiply an integer by 2 it's still going to remain an integer let's say it's going to be another integer l here you have k squared that's just a fancy way of saying k times k if you multiply an integer times itself it's still going to be an integer let's call it m and then if you take 2 times m so an integer times an integer is still going to be another integer let's call it t and then if you add an integer plus an integer it's still going to give you another integer, let's call it r. So at the end of the day, this whole thing is just going to end up being an integer and we can call that integer r. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it r. And this has to do with the closure properties of integers, which I explained in the previous video. So if you go to Sarai Studies and click on it, I have a whole section here that explains the closure properties of integers. But in simple words, the property just says that if you multiply two integers, you get another integer. You don't get a decimal. It's always just gonna be an integer. If you add two integers, you get another integer. If you subtract two integers, you get another integer. But if you divide two integers, integers you may not always get another integer so we say that integers are closed under multiplication addition and subtraction but not division so the closure property of integers under product and sum because we multiplied integers and we summed them up implies that n squared is going to be equal to two times and then this property says that yeah this is going to end up being another integer we're going to call that integer r and then we drop down this plus one and we specify that r is equal to 2k squared plus 2k where r is also an integer now now look at what beautiful thing we have here we have an integer and again we know that n squared is an integer because we're dealing with the domain being set of all integers so we have an integer that is equal to another integer r we know that r is an integer because of the closure property of integers that is being multiplied by 2 and increased by 1 and we happen to have a definition that says if we have an integer like n squared and we have another integer like r we multiply r by 2 and increase it by 1 in other words if this side of the implication is true then this if and only if in our definition this double implication operator allows us to say if one side of the implication is true then the other is also true so this integer right here and squared 
is odd. So that's why we can conclude that n squared is odd by the definition of an odd integer. In other words, because n squared takes the form of an odd integer, which is two times an integer plus one, two times an integer plus one, and we can say that n squared is odd. So we say therefore, that's what the symbol means, and then you just copy and paste what they wanted you to prove. If n is odd, then n squared is odd, and then you do a little box to show that you're done with your proof. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next.